And there he went. Yes, I know exactly who he is. Okay, hit so. Record. Go. So you're going to just introduce yourself, please. And then if you can just tell us, you know, a thing or two or three that you want people to know about what your okay. experience was. Okay. Um, my name is Holly Troutman Rissinger, um, and I grew up within the dam project, and uh, our family was forced to move via eminent domain. Um, and I'll tell you a little story that sticks in my mind, actually two. Um, so during this whole time, I was basically a young teen to maybe 16, 17 years old as the whole process of the dam and up until the start of it. And um, the government man came to the house and uh, they were sitting at the dining room table, my mom and dad, and we kids were hiding, but listening. And um, I remember the government man, they were chatting and then he said the number to my dad of how much they were willing to pay. And uh, my dad looked at him and said, you're not even in the ball game. And the government man looked at him and said, well, if you don't take our offer, we will condemn your home. And my father looked at him and said, go ahead. Now, I'm sure that my father can elaborate on that story a lot more, but as a child, the three of us were terrified. Well, you know, what does that mean? But it, you know, I remember being frightened and uh, the government ended up suing my father. And my father won, my mom and dad won. And I actually don't know how many people that happened with, not many. And the other story was during the construction, I had to ask the gentleman whose image I remember if it was a real image because so much of this was buried until Marilyn and Steve came to my house to get a painting. And after they left, it was an incredible emotional time. And so many memories came to the surface that I had buried. And one of them was of a friend of mine who got hired by the dam and, and another friend of ours. And I have this intense image of them during the construction of the Mount Pleasant Bridge on top of a pier, probably 40 feet in the air, looking absolutely terrified, and they had no robes. And I asked him about that tonight, and I said, did I see this? And he said, you most certainly did. And I said, did you have robes? And he said, no, we did not. And, you know, scary stuff. Um, I remember driving by when Jeff Kreitler died because the way they were constructing the Church Road Bridge, that tunnel was covered. And he came out of the boat and he was killed. And my dad had picked me up at college and we were driving by. And all the emergency vehicles were there. And you know, you just had this bad feeling. And we got home and Norman Reif Snyder called to tell us it was Jeff. And I haven't really thought about that for a long time, either. So, and my mother's farm, the farm she grew up on, and how they took, her mother was a folk artist, and she had painted above the doorways, and we wanted that stuff, and they said you could have it, and, and the week after the Rice Snyders moved out, they demolished it. And my mother, brother and I crawled around in the rubble and I found one little piece and that was it. They took everything. So it was painful for everybody mm -hmm. for a long period of time. You know, not just, this just didn't happen in a year. That was a stressful number of years until everything came to fruition and the fight was over. You know, that we were going to lose. And thank God Chris Kreitler painted the farms, you know, so. So what does tonight mean for you and your family? Wow, a lot of memories. And thank God somebody's telling the story. Because it was never told. You know, we all buried it. I think we all did. And there's a lot of excitement about somebody bringing this to the, to the front again and saying, hey, 